so welcome back to another video um as we cut the other one short the other day we sort of done like the spec list on the glanza um it was going to be a long video if i'd done it in in one whole video so i thought two part it do you know what i mean i thought i'd do the engine sort of spec list today so um yeah let's get started so going on to a few bits i know off the top of my head and then um i might have to get the phone out and um go through some of the other bits but um starting with we've got a ford idle control valve on it which i think is different i have never heard of one of these engines having a ford idle control valve so that's on there we've also got a peugeot power steering pump i think a few bits have been customized obviously to adapt for this to fit on here we've got an rmd front mounted intercooler down there as you can see and then going on to going on to the turbo we have got i think it's called a kingu or something like that it's basically a tvo4 turbo 20 grand and um it's, it's quite a big turbo for this i think a lot of the other ones do run tdo4s the only thing i've sort of found with this one is it is quite laggy i mean you put your foot down takes a while takes a while and then boom it's there so it is a, is a little bit laggy so it's quite a big turbo it looks it looks a fair size in in the engine bay itself but um yeah no no complaints apart from it's a little bit laggy so we've got a custom um catch can here as well as you can see you can drain that from the bottom oh. you can drain that from the bottom as you can see the bung's there for it We've also got a five litre baffled sump, um, which is all there, nice and neat as you can see. All nice and neat as you can see. Holds five litres of oil, which is a good thing, because I think standard ones of these only hold around three, three litres, something like that. So five litres is quite, quite a bit more than what you would get on your standard one. So there is an uprated cooling system on this. So it's consisting of a modified three-core aluminium Honda Civic half radiator. It's got a spool pull fan. It's got custom pipe work, polo header tank to increase the cooling capacity as well, as you can see here. So it keeps things nice, nice and cool as well, especially around track. When we done that track day, didn't overheat once, didn't get too hot, and it was it was perfect. It was spot on. So um, that that does really help got a fuel lab adjustable fuel pressure regulator down here and the throttle body has been enlarged as well yeah so it's got a custom three inch i'm gonna to have to read this so it's got a custom three inch downpipe with a plumb back wastegate um it's got genuine tile mf mvs wastegate in black um v-band exhaust system through throughout um i can't say this properly but a king guana monster billet sts wheel um and so a compressor housing six centimeter exhaust housing for the tdo4 turbo i was on about earlier it's got a cosworth style k&m filter um power flex polyphene poly, polyphene engine mounts all round well say all round in the engine um it's got so much on this it's, it's actually ridiculous an6 custom teflon fuel lines used wherever possible custom oil cooler um consisting of a set rab 13 row oil cooler torque billet aluminium cooler anodized sandwich plate incorporating 80 degrees c thermostat and a 10 braided lines that's them an line so this is these things these are um quite popular you know it's like i think i need one actually going onto my turbo i believe somewhere somewhere along that line on the coolant lines because i took it to the garage and they did say should upgrade them to the am ones and i was like, oh, okay so that that is on the um on the job list as well to do so make things a little bit tidier and and i believe they're they're much more better than a fucking jubilee clip or something so yeah on the drivetrain it's got a um kaz 1.5 limited slip diff um it's got an orc augura 309 silent type clutch and flywheel kit um, it's got custom ARP flywheel bolts, power flip, polyphene, gearbox mounts, rebuilt shaft, shifter bushes replaced and bearings, TRT, quick shifter, um, and loads of other bits on that as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list down below in the um, description the actual spec list of this so then you guys can sort of go through it and have a look for yourself rather than me reading it off the phone and probably sounding like an invalid. But um, yeah, I'll go on. I'll touch base on a few other bits. It's got like a Link G4 Plus Monsoon standalone ECU on it. 
Um, it's got a custom fuse relay panel to suit engine loom and link ECU. It's got an extra fuse box behind the glove box, which I think I showed a few of you on the previous videos. Um, it's got a Honda K20 core on plug conversion, sequential fuel and ignition using a 32 2 crank sensor as an OEM distributor cam sync. Um, yeah, going on to a few other bits. Um, so obviously we've got the rotor grids on, running AR1 tyres all around. Um, we have got a white line front and rear anti-roll bar, powder coated black, Powerflex rear beam, axle bushes, Powerflex black series anti-lift kit, Super Pro front wishbone bushes, white line front wishbone drop links, new inner steering rack tie rods and track rod ends, Powerflex black series steering rack bushes and the list goes on honestly, it's, there's so much more. Um, touching, touching base on the brakes, got 295 discs, Anadoy's black billet, four pot low profile race calipers had fitted to a Radical R SR free race cars, Hellbrady brake lines, EBC blue stuff pads, um, yeah, and on and on and on. 5.1 dot brake fluid, ABS kit, rem ABS removal kit, rear calipers have been all fully rebuilt and um, powder coated, etc. Um, Cusco brake master cylinder stopper, stripped interior, obviously, as you know. Um, going on to that it's got adjustable coilovers as well the brand of them coilovers oh what were they i'm trying to think now yeah coilovers that was master oh, was fully adjustable as well um yeah that that is the spec list of the glanzer underneath in the bonnet so we've had the outside we've got the inside now um under the bonnet etc a few other bits to tidy up and that but um I'm going to list everything down below in the description so it gives you a sort of rough idea and if you own one of these it can give you an idea of what you can do to yours and it might give you a few tips on changing a few bits on yours and if if, if you don't own a glanzer and you're just here for the content then happy days but um yeah that that is the spec list of mine um hope you enjoyed it and um yeah my my honest review on this I haven't had any problems with it it's been pretty much decent motor obviously we had the gearbox rebuilt as well but um, on a whole, it, it drives very well. It's noisy, like I said before. And um, performance-wise, it's it's been spot on. I have had one issue where I come outside and it wouldn't start, and I was like, oh, bloody hell, what's going on here? But it weren't cranking. It was just, there was just nothing. I put a battery jumper on it, didn't, didn't want to go, and I was like, what's going on here? So I got a bar and I hit the starter motor and the alternator, boom, straight away it started. But I don't know if that was my fault leaving it outside for a week when I could have put it in the garage, but I was just being lazy. So, yeah, I don't know if the cold weather and shit like that's just seized it a little bit, but as soon as I've hit it, it starts every time on the button. So, yeah, might be one of them. Might be on the way out. So, one of them things I might have to replace. But um, other than that, it's been spot on. But, um, yeah, I'll leave the video there. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.